Hey there, this is Scott with Showing Austin. Here's a quick walkthrough of the Apple Final Cut camera app and how it could help videographers for professional use, as well as how it compares to the Blackmagic camera app. I will not be reviewing the multicam features in this video, which looks to be a great feature and could be a great option along with Lima Fusion and others. You will see that in this description for the Final Cut camera in the App Store, they do refer to professional features. So let's take a look. I will go right into the settings and show you what they give you. You got your Kodak options here, Apple ProRes, or the H265, which is great and simple, but I'm gonna go with Apple ProRes when we go all out. You've got your formatting features here, your 4K, your frame rate, 24, et cetera. I'm gonna keep this at 24, be as cinematic as possible, especially since I'm on a gimbal for testing purposes. So we're gonna go 4K, we're gonna go 24. You can choose your color. This is another big thing. You can go and choose log which you see right here. You can also choose the Rec 709 or HDR. If you want to make it more simple, you can go HDR. I'm gonna keep stabilization off because I'm using a gimbal for this purpose. And of course you can mirror your front camera and, and turn that around an app. The tools are gonna to be your grid overlay. I choose to have them. It's kind of nice for composition. The aspect ratio guide, shockingly, it's only a square or 4.3. It's no anamorphic options. It's not even a 16.9 or a 16 by nine or a nine by 16 uh, for, for reels and verticals. It does pick up your audio source pretty well. I'm just keeping my, my phone as the audio source for the test. And here is your screen. You'll see along the left, the settings that you've chosen, Apple ProRes, your log, your 4K and your 24 frames per second, which you, which you can actually change on the fly in the camera view. The audio bars at the top left don't really give you anything but the audio bars, there's no tapping ability there. And the big the thing is on the right side, the big arrow at the top right, this is your, gonna be your big, your big uh, customization tapping area, so to speak. When you do click this, you're going to not only see below that your lenses you've chosen. And I've chosen, by the way, the 24 millimeter to get the best quality of the One X. When you do choose this, the uh, arrow here at the top right, you're going to first see your unlocked or left right portrait orientation. I left it unlocked so I have total control. The next option here is going to be your autofocus. You can jump it out of auto and put it in the manual, which I've done here, and I've moved it up and down a little bit but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it back in auto for this test. And it is certainly a pro level feature to let you do that. I also, the next thing is pretty big here. That's exposure, the biggest pro level feature that could be. It's in auto right now. You can adjust your shutter, your ISO, and that is gonna be a huge thing for you. It's gonna be nice on the fly to have such a simple interface. The next big thing is gonna be your color balance, your white balance, I'm sorry. And it is going to be locked in default to an auto setting, but it's really nice because it does give you some presets. I'm going to go ahead and choose for this comparison, the daylight 5600, because we got bright sunny day and, and why not? The coolest feature, in my opinion, is actually the magnifier there, which is your zoom. It allows you to do a slow zoom in and out. I go a little too quickly with this sample. It keeps the focusing. That's pretty neat. You can obviously go a lot slower. So I think that's a real neat feature. And here we're going to go and do a, a clip for you. The ProRes Log 4K, 24 frames per second. Now, the big difference with the Blackmagic camera app with this right now is on Blackmagic camera, you can not only view a LUT that you can upload yourself. For example, the Apple Log LUT, which you're going to see me apply in a moment. You can only view it as a monitor while you're watching your video, but you can also save it to the clip. People don't do that, do that, but the fact is you can do both. It's really helpful as a monitor. So here I've gone ahead and done the quick color grading on the clip that I just showed you that I was taking. I did use the Apple Log 2 Rec 709 and I did some quick, uh, quick, easy color grading, nothing too fancy, made sure I didn't have too much pop there. Try to make it look as realistic as possible. But that is a pretty nice quality image coming out of the camera and by the way i do have the 1x lens but i do have the b script 0.75x wide angle so it is a little wider than that 24 millimeter here i want to show you that apple actually doesn't put this in your photos folder automatically you do have to export it from the app the arrow at the bottom inside the box much like black magic you will have to export it airdrop it save it to the cloud etc so some people may not like that not a terrible thing but that is actually a lot like the black magic app hope you enjoy this quick rundown it, it seems to be a, a good quick and easy way for photographers and videographers to use 
on the fly. It's not as advanced and as cumbersome as the DaVinci Blackmagic camera, but it's certainly better than a native app. 